right. Well, it was a trial thing four That's years right. ago, and now it's for real. Now it's for and you're real. expected to win again. I know the, the, the pressure's amazing. You see, when Torval and Dean, as it were, packed it in, we lost the chances of gold medals and or any kind of medals really at wow. the at the Winter Olympics. And you you're the you're our big white hope, aren't you? Well, that's a that's a matter of opinion. I think most people have have put me up there as as the big hope for gold. You're not going to talk yourself down now, are you, Will? Come on, we want I optimism here. We're not going to get a medal unless you win it. I wouldn't say that. I would say that obviously I'm going to go out there as possibly favourite for the gold. I'm the world champion, and uh, I'm going to go out there and have such a good time, and hopefully. No, don't have a good gold. time. Well, don't have a good time. <laughs> win, win. Well, no, I think in order to win, you have to have a good time. No, you don't. Yeah, well, absolutely. You've got to concentrate and win. On the day of the race, you'll be concentrating, but in between, you, you have to have a good time. Now, I don't have to tell you anyway, because I think you're pretty well motivated. I mean, do you gear yourself up, work yourself up into a kind of mental state that you have to win? I think one thing that most people don't know is actually hate training. Yeah? Yeah. Training is a real bore. How long do you train then? Four or five hours a day. Um, the, the key issue, though, is that I prefer or I like winning a lot better than losing. Yeah. And that's why I do that immense amount of training. Yeah. And the training, I mean, we ought to say this is the sprint. And it's the first time in the Olympics that the sprint. How long is the sprint? Well, we will be skating over the 1,000 metres in Alberville on the 18th and 22nd. How long do you do? Uh, how long does it take? Sorry, uh, just over a minute and a half. Yeah. So how fast are you going? We would reach speeds of somewhere about 30, 35 mile an hour. Fantastic. And is it dangerous? I mean, these things are sharp. Obviously, they have to be to cut through the ice. Well, they're not that sharp. I mean, most people think they're sort of knife sharp. Yeah, but, don't um, keep doing that. You'll injure yourself before the game. <laughs> <laughs> but um, very much like skiing, you have edges on the in inside edge and the outside edge. But it's immensely skillful. You're, you've got to take those corners so sharply. It, it, you, don't, you don't see any danger in it. There obviously is a, a, an element of danger, but I think most people would, uh, would agree, anybody that's good at what they do, minimize the risk of danger. How did, you, how did you become so good at this? I mean, it's not a natural sport for, for a Briton, is it? Right. I, I started figure skating and uh, through the pressures, I think, of, of, of financial problems. Then, uh, and speed skating was a, a, ne a cheaper sport to take up, if you like. And it, it, it progressed from there. Yeah. Have you got enormous hams? Hams. What are hams? I thought hams. No, because I've got very big hams. But I wouldn't have hams like you. No, they're quads, Terry. Oh, they're quads? They're quads. Where are the hams? Yeah. No, the I hams, ask. The hams, I know where the hams are. The hams are, are yes. at the back. Let's not talk about the hams right. then. Yeah, so, I mean, this is where your power comes That's from. That's right. I mean, most people sort of, when they, whenever they first see me, they say, are you Wilfred Wright? I say, yeah. They say, well, we were expecting this guy that was sort of like this big and this wide. And I say, no, no, but for short track speed skating, you need to be a little bit smaller and a little bit just to get around the corner. But the, lo the longer distance ones which we've seen, fellas like Eric Hyden, who won, yep. I don't know, five, six gold medals. Five. Enormously big guys, huge, huge legs. Yeah. And skin-tight outfits. Well, we, we wear the skin-tight outfits Good man. as well. But <laughs> just, um, you don't care, do you? No, no, absolutely not. No. But we just cover a few other things up, like we wear a crash yes, helmet, quite, gloves yes. and stuff like that. <laughs> Where do you wear the crash helmet? Oh, yes. On the head, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Are you... Are you sort of anyway disappointed that Eddie the Eagle isn't going to be with you this year? I, I think that's cruel. They've banned him. Well, no, I think, I think it'd be really nice if he was going to come out and watch me. But uh, obviously, if he's there, I think it'll be, it'll be nice to see him there. Yeah. I don't agree whether, whether or not he should be competing. I think most Olympic athletes have to achieve a standard to compete. Myself and the other six, five guys that are going to do the speed skating, Joanne Conway in the figure skating and the bobsleigh guys and the Martin Bell, etc. So we've all had standards to meet. Actually, we've got a bit of a chance. Joanne Conway's got a chance, and so has the bobsleigh fellas have a chance. Absolutely, I yeah. think. So we might come away with more than one gold, one more medal, one, more than one gold medal, in fact. Well, definitely. I think that, that the, um, the team's going to go out there, obviously, to do their best. And I hope with a little bit of luck of the Irish and a prayer here or there. You're never Irish with a name like O'Reilly, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did the Wilf come from? Well, it's actually Wilfred, it's sort of been shortened down. It's been Willie and Will and a few yeah. other things, but we won't say that on here. Well, now, there's not... I know it's a, it's a familiar complaint with a lot of sports here, but you actually don't train here, do you? No, I spend, I've spent more or less the last six months in Holland, where, in fact, it's their national sport speed skating. So, um, 
A, the facilities, I wouldn't say the facilities are much better, which is normally the, the general comment, because we have 48 ice rinks in this country, except they keep knocking them down every now and again, like Richmond. That's right, they just like closed that. one, yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> the facilities we have here to do speed skating, the problem is he's actually getting the time to skate, and obviously that the quality of ice is very important as well. Uh, didn't I see somewhere that you could train here, but they'd only allow you between 1 and 2 in the morning or something? I've done that. I've, but I've had to overcome all those problems to, uh, to, you know, become world champion, European champion. You use the same muscles as cyclists, don't you? I mean, it, roughly, you're developed the same way as a cyclist, big, big muscles here. Yeah. You, you have ambitions in that direction, too? Well, I'd like to, after, uh, after the Olympics and after the world championships in, in Denver, try to make out for the Barcelona Because Eric Hayden is a cyclist as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's now, your big inspiration is your mother, and I'm delighted you went up to Birmingham and dragged her down here unwillingly. Is she with us in the audience? Where's Wilf's mom? Give us a wave, Mum. Give us a wave, Mum. <laughs> Where's she hiding? She's over there. Where's your mother gone? Where is she? She's been very quiet. There she is. Where? Over there. My oh, there she is, down there the bottom. Don't be so shy, Mr. O'Reilly. He owes it all to you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us, and thank you too, Wilf. It's thank nice you very to much. See you. Thank you. Wilf O'Reilly. And good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yes, we wish Wilf, we wish Wilf every success. Hope you get that gold, and of course the other members of the team, whom I, sh I shouldn't sell short because I think we have got great chances for medals. Okay, thanks to Wilf. Safe journey to Albeville. Now Natasha Richardson and Jimmy Mulville will be swarming all over the city later, so now's as good a time as any to bend your musical ear with us. In Albeville, the new Olympic sport of short track speed skating will be in the 7,000-seater Grand Hall Ice Rink, the venue for the figure skating. The men's event is over 1,000 meters, and that means the skaters have to negotiate the 111-meter track nine times. Since the straight is only 28 meters long, the skaters are constantly fighting to stay on their feet round the tight bends. The winner is the first to get his skate across the line. And although pushing is not allowed, contact is frequent and the skaters must wear a safety helmet. The start is like a sprint start without blocks and the competitor has to glide by the time he reaches the first bend. The crossover of the feet is very complex and at great speed can sometimes cause problems of tripping over your own or other people's skates. The boot itself is a stark contrast to a conventional figure skate. The blade is 16 inches long, attached by two thick pins, and they're held in place by fiberglass and resin. The upper is a very light and strong compound, molded to the foot. Each heat normally involves four skaters, with two progressing through to the next round. No skater competes against his own teammates in the heats, and the top skaters are kept apart. Great Britain's Wilf O'Reilly should reach the final. His tremendous fitness could even take him to Britain's first gold. And Nicky Gooch and Matt Jasper won't just be making up the numbers. The men's relay involves 45 laps of this tight track, each team containing four skaters. The changeovers are always dramatic, with the incoming skater giving his teammate as big a push as possible. Perhaps after this evening, Britain's medal prospects will be given just as big a boost. Well, welcome to the Olympic Arena Live. Tonight's programme starts with the men's heats in the 1,000 metres. The Britons, uh, Nicky Gooch, drawn in heat two. Um, Matt Jasper in heat three. And Wilf O'Reilly goes in heat number six. The first two in each of the heat, eight heats go into the next round. The quarterfinals to be held on Thursday. In the women's event, we've also got eight heats. Debbie Palmer going for Great Britain in heat number three. So we're 500 metres. And finally, we've got a 5,000 metres men's relay heat. Three heats in that, just to eliminate one team. That will be held on time. But the first two events, the 1,000 metres for men and the 500 metres for women, the first two go through as of right. 
short track speed skating apparently began in about 1905 in North America. But it was really first recognized by the International Skating Union as recently as 1967. But it's made rapid progress since, and it certainly is exciting. Uh, Paul Dickinson made the point that it was, uh, it was a contact sport. It's almost inevitable. It does get a bit physical. But of course, if you're deemed to have deliberately barged, you can be eliminated. It's padding all the way around the rink, you can see it in the background, but especially on the bend. Getting ready for the first uh, one. There's Dano of uh, Canada, one of the uh, outstanding athletes in short track. The world champion in 89 of the 1,000 meters, at 1,500 meters rather than 3,000. Second to Wilfo Rally in the 88 demonstration event at this distance. He's the current world record holder at 1,500. Michel Dano. He's drawn in the first heat. The first four coming out. In the background there is the New Zealander, Chris Nicholson. 14 is Dano. 1,000 metres. Uh, the track is 111 metres and a fraction above, just a fraction above that, so it's nine laps of the track. And of course, the bends are all important. Five, three, Chris Nicholson, member of the New Zealand team, who did so well in the World Championships. Uh, they've got a promising team coming through. But he's second in the World Championship relay in Australia last year. following out the Canadian and the Hungarian there is uh, Kunbalint followed by Nicholson of Canada eight heats then 1,000 meters the first two go through into the quarterfinals nine laps of the track semi-final in the European Championship just over a month ago <laughs> Hugo Herrenhoff wearing 35 for Italy third in the European Championships recently and in the world 1500 meters so the lineup from the inside Nicholson New Zealand Danio of Canada, Valent of Hungary, Ernhoff, nearest the camera of Italy. Nine laps of the track. Ready? The first two sure to go through. The sprint start, rather like a running start, then gliding into the bend. The Hungarian Valent now in front. In second place, Danio. Third is Nicholson. And fourth at the moment, the Italian Ernhoff. Watch uh, Danio. There you know, it goes hard on the inside, trying to establish himself. Followed by Hanhoff. And coming up on the outside is Nicholson now. Nicholson making a break wide. He surprised the Canadian then. It's Nicholson now, New Zealand. Daniel in second place. The Italian Hanhoff is third. And fourth, the Hungarian Ballant. That was a real break by the young New Zealander. But Daniel is very experienced. Still Nicholson leading and getting a go on the inside is Hanhoff. And Daniel now in third place, they come round with four to go. Nicholson leads for New Zealand. In second place, Hernoff for Italy. Third is uh, Daniel, the Canadian, one of the favourites. Got to go to get in the first two to qualify, and there he goes on the outside, but there's no room. Got back on the inside, though. Into second place. Hernoff leads Italy. Two to go. The Canadian, Daniel, in second place. Nicholson is third. The race between those three, two will qualify. This time they should hear the bell. Daniel giving himself plenty of room, trying to block the New Zealander going up on the outside. And there goes Daniel Canada. Daniel comes home in front and in second place, the Italian head. Nicholson and Valent go out of the competition. The time 133.23.
Well, Daniel has placed his marker down already. He, without any doubt at all, one of the danger men. Remember, he was second to a rally four years ago in the demonstration event. The world record holder at 1,500 metres. Nicholson there put them under pressure, though, very early on. The time, 133.23. The world record, by the way, is 131.80. Held by someone you're going to see in the second heat, Kawasaki of Japan, set in 1990. Daniel, 25. Been skating since, uh, in short track since he was 12 years old. And incidentally, mums and dads watching at home and youngsters, there's a very strong peewee circuit in Great Britain. I, I went to Surly Hill to see some of them in action the other week. The helmets are bigger than the children in some cases, but my word, do they go. So we come to the second heat. Nicky Gooch, only 19, comes from Roehampton, fifth in the European Championship, 1500. But this, the biggest occasion of his life. And for the lineup, Kawasaki, the world record holder on the inside, Elva Bakken of Norway, Nicky Gooch, Great Britain, and Blackburn, the promising Canadian. In fact, they think a lot of him, and a couple of big Canadian names have been left out of their team. To some people's surprise, Blackburn brought in at the age also only 19. And Elva Bakken of Norway. He's 21. Kawasaki is 27. The world champion in 1990, the world record holder. <coughs> He's checking on the draw, Kawasaki. According to my draw, should be on the inside. Well, Blackman seems to have gone in there. Kawasaki in two. Nicky Gooch right on the outside. According to the official draw, was in third place. Outside draw is not a good one. By the way, it's the uh, Norwegian Elva Bakken who goes out in front. Kawasaki is tucked in at the back. Blackman of Canada in second place. Nicky Gooch, Great Britain third. And the world record holder, Kawasaki, in fourth place. So it's Norway one. Canada two. Britain three. Japan four. No signs of any attack so far. Nicholson took it on last time for New Zealand, but nobody seems to want to take this on. They've got six laps left. Elva back and leading. Blackman in second place. Gooch is third. Kawasaki four. Kawasaki's got a tremendous change of speed, though. Five laps left. And they're speeding up now. And it was Norwegian in front who speeded it up. Trying to take it by surprise. There goes Blackman, though, of Canada with four laps left. Elva back in second place. Gooch goes out into second place. Kawasaki, the world record holder, at the back in fourth place at the moment. And Gooch has gone. He's hit the barrier, and he's out of the race. It's Blackman, Canada leading. Kawasaki of Japan in second place. These two well clear now and look certain to qualify. Two laps left. Nicky Gooch has picked himself up, looking very disconsolate. This time the bell. Blackman leads for Canada. Kawasaki of Japan. World champion two years ago. The 19 years old Canadian leading the world record holder. They come home safely, shake hands with all the time in the world. And Nicky Gooch skates down the back straight just ahead of him. A lonely figure, very disappointed indeed. But it's a physical sport. There's bound to be contact on those short bends. Unless the contact is uh, seen to be unfair. There's no question of any reinstatement. Well, everything they said about this young Canadian turned out to be right. Freddie Blackburn, three years in international, preferred to place of some of his more experienced teammates. There's Nicky Gooch, just out of shot, going up into second place, starting to lose it, and nobody else was involved. We come now to the third heat, 29 there is Matt uh, Jasper, only 19 for Great Britain. Second in the World Championship last year behind uh, Wilf O'Reilly. 
time a lot slower of course in that second one with them being able to cruise in 138.66 fastest time so far was in the first heat by Danio Canada 133.23 but time totally unimportant now it's just a matter of qualifying to the start number 18 Dimitri of Japan fell in uh, his semi-final four years ago Jasper Democratic Republic of Korea. Number uh, they say to the Wilfo Raleigh crowd. Great Britain. Only 19. Five foot eight. Weighs about 11 stone. Ideally built. Japan. Number 18 is Erchoff, the only uh, unified team entrant in the men's events. 56 is uh, Wonho Lai, the People's Republic of Korea. Northern Korea, but in Olympic language, PRK. The first two qualify nine laps, 1,000 meters. Fault start. Time to get away. 56 in the lead straight away is Lai of uh, Northern Korea. Jasper in second place. Going up on the outside and coming around is Kawhi of Japan. Wearing number 40. Kawhi leads. Lai in second place. Jasper is third. And Erchef of the Unified Team in fourth place. And there goes Erchef a bit early this time. He's gone from last to first. Erchef leads. Kawhi sell in second place for Japan. Third is Lai of Korea. And on the outside, coming right through, trying to get a better position is Jasper. There's a lot of uh, boxing going on there. And nearly a bump. And number 40 got taken out. That was Kawhi of Japan. Lost a lot of ground. Five laps left. Leader, air chop, Soviet Union. Jasper for Great Britain in second place. Lai is third for North Korea. Still trying to make up ground is Kawhi. Erchoff leads. Jasper in second place, looking comfortable. Right behind him is Lai of Korea. Three laps to go, and Jasper goes into the lead. He found a gap on the inside, and he's gone for it. Lai in second place. Erchoff, United team in third place. The three clear of the Japanese, who's given up practically. And now it's Jasper and Lai. Just breaking clear of Erchoff. As they come round to the bell, and Jasper, 19 years old, going for it hard. And they've got right away from their job. Jasper leads for Great Britain. In second place, Lai of the People's Republic of Korea. They qualify. The time, 136.86. Very composed piece of skating by young uh, Matthew Jasper. Comes from Drake on in Derbyshire. Reached the semi-finals of the 500 and the European 1,000 metres. Second in the World Championship last year, which showed his promise behind Wilf O'Reilly. And he was certainly not unsettled by Olympic competition. We're looking for gaps here. Look at the clash between the Korean and the Japanese. The Japanese came off worst. They look for space down the straights. Well, now we come to the fourth. Heat, only three in this. But a strong three. Blanchot of uh, Belgium, Velzibor of Holland, Nizielski of Australia. Number Jasper just comparing notes. Number 56 is disqualified for charging. Got to be well pleased with the control he showed in that first round. Get ready to go to the heat box. Mark Lackey, Canada. Canada. Andy Gable, Etats Unis d'Amérique. A little bit of uh, water being America. placed on the bends in particular. Korea. Number six is Blanchard when you spot him. Velzibor wears 48. Blanchard, Belgique. Nizielski wears number five for Australia. And incidentally, we've just heard that uh, 
The uh, lie has been disqualified for elbowing the Japanese, who still goes out, but Urchoff now moves into second place. So Jasper and Urchoff are the qualifiers. Lai was disqualified for that bump when he took the Japanese out. A few arguments about that, because they've got to keep looking for room on the inside. The Australian, Izielski. Three going, there's two qualifying. The leader straight away, the big Belgian. Blanchard, one of the favourites. The European champion at 1,500 metres. Third in the World Championship 12 months ago. Blanchard leads. Second place, Belzibour. His two sisters will be skating later in the 500 metres. And Monique is Wolf O'Reilly's girlfriend. And uh, O'Reilly trains on the Belzibour's farm quite often over there. Does a lot of his uh, groundwork pounding around the farm fields. So it's Velzibor now in front, Blanchot in second place. Mizielski of Australia is a barman, by the way, third place. Australia won gold in the uh, World Championship relay in 1991, and he was a member of their team. Both New Zealand and Australia developing good young athletes in this sport. Four laps to go. Belzibor leading, Blanchot in second place. The Australian looking for space on the inside, it's not there. And Blanchot found it when Belzibor went wide. And Belzibor back on the inside, they were trying to get it there, and it's very close, but no contact. Blanchot leads, Belzibor in second place. Dizielski third for Australia. This time they'll hear the bell. Blanchard leads, Belzibor second, Dzielski third, two to qualify. The battle for space is on, but the Australian can't get anywhere at all. Try to come through, but uh, Blanchard and uh, Belzibor, the two qualifiers. 138.74, not very fast. The first one, won by Danio, still the fastest, 133.23. It's a good effort by the uh, young Australian, who's not too experienced at this level but nevertheless stuck with two of the best skaters in the competition. But he just couldn't find any room at all on the inside. Always looking, always pressing. But they were too experienced. Blanchard's 25. He fell in his quarterfinal of the European uh, 1,000 metres a month ago, won by Wilf Arani. Willie O'Reilly de Grande Bretagne, Great Britain, Jay Kun Song de Corée, Korea. Au départ, s'il vous plaît. To the start, please. And look at the Australian there trying to find room on the inside, but they, they just closed him down. Blanchard in front of him on the far side, and Belsibor, who's next to him. The Australian dives for the line and doesn't make it. Le numéro 45, number 45. June Holy, well, now, heat number five. It's a confirmation of uh, heat four. Heat five will be Lackey of Canada, Gable, United States, and Lee of Korea. Both Lackey and Gable have skated in this arena before, the pre games uh, warm up competition. And I think they tied for first place in the 500 meters in December or perhaps late November. Andy Gable, the top American. On the inside. And Lee of Korea. And there's the camera. Lackey of Canada. Very unsteady. It was the American Andy Gable on the inside who got problems. Pretty strong uh, first round, this one. Gable, the American number one. Lackey, 89 world champion at 500 metres, and Lee of Korea, the world champion currently at 1,500 metres. Very easy start, though. Andy Gable leading. It's taken on the outside by Lackey of Canada. Lee of Korea waiting at the back. 
America leads, Canada in second place. Korea third, and they're just gliding. Six hundred meters left. Gable America now attacks. Lackey of Canada goes with him. And Lackey gets somebody inside. Lackey Canada leads. Gable in second place. The world champion of 1500 meters, Lee of Korea, is third at the moment. And Gable's lost his place completely. And look at the uh, Korean on the inside. Attacking all the time. And Gable's getting back. Tremendous American support. And the markers flying all over the place there on that bend. Lee leads. Lackey goes for it down the Canadian. Canada in front, Korea second, Gable America third. This time the bell is still Lackey leading. Lee second, Gable in trouble in third place. The final bend. Lackey is going to be first across. Lee in second place. Lackey, the American number one, goes out in the very first round. There was a bit of contact during the race. The markers went flying. They're like little ice hockey pucks. Uh, Gable came off worse and couldn't really get back in the race. Mark Lackey, 24. Are qualified. Numero 16. Number 16. Mark Lackey, Canada. This is where the uh, action took place. Number 45. On the last Korea. bend, and the American realizes it's not his day. Will O'Reilly, the world champion, the European champion, going now for Britain in heat number six. Get ready to go to the heat box. Ki Hoon Kim, Korea, Korea. May have been a little bit of pushing in that uh, previous race, but so far no signs of a, a complaint. Japan. Au départ, s'il vous plaît. To the start, please. Le numéro 17. Number 17. And the news is that Gable has been disqualified, we believe, for pushing. But in fact, of course, he didn't qualify anyway. Uh, I think I caught that on the PA. Yes, he has. So Gable didn't qualify in any case, and Lackey and Lee go through. Well, now the Wilfer Rally race. And in this, we've got uh, Liani Li, or Lai of China, Wilfer Rally, and Song of Korea. Raleigh won two gold medals when they were demonstration sports four years ago. Remember the Mohawks Club in the Midlands? No doubt his uh, coach Bob Copeman does so much valuable work as well with the Birchfield Harriers. I'll be glued to the set. Told to relax and just. Uh, Go back and line up again. The referee, by the way, is uh, Kenneth Pendry of Great Britain. De la piste, il est demandé que les ramasseurs de flot remettent de l'eau sur cette piste. It's a slight hold. Some water needed on uh, one of the bends, I think. The delay is due to the track stewards. That's where the, uh, on the ice in order to keep it clean for the skaters. The pushing occurred. Perhaps there was the ice was cut up a little bit. Try to keep a clean surface for the skaters. Mr. Pendry is saying he's happy now. And the three skaters are called back to the starting line. Will Ferrari. 27. Was the UK record at 400, 500, 1,000, and 3,000 meters? Ready. Oh, Riley got a brilliant start there. He left them for dead. He's gone right away from them. They're taken completely by surprise. The Korean now in second place. Song has started the chase, but already, Lie of China is in some trouble. 
Raleigh's not really taken too much advantage of that. But he started so quickly. He's a very good starter indeed. Relax, not taking too much out of himself. He's also got a very good change of speed. So, the Korean and the Chinese back in contention. Riley's so relaxed. And there's the attack now, just speed it up slightly, call ups to go. The Korean went with him. Song. Again, uh, speed it up on the bend, but glides down the straight. Really made an effort to get away. Song in second place, Lai is third, two laps to go. O'Reilly starting to wind it up, some bumping behind him, the Chinese got squeezed out. This time they hear the bell and it's O'Reilly leading. Song in second place, O'Reilly out of trouble in front, trying to not to let a gap appear on the inside, and he succeeded. And quite a finish there, the Korean got across in second place, but was the Chinaman unfairly blocked? One thirty seven point three six for O'Reilly. Led all the way, just did what he had to do and no more. Our qualified, the number thirty, Willie O'Reilly, Great Britain, the number This is where the trouble occurred. Korea. Well, Song is given second place at the moment. Possibly decided that lie if China was looking for a gap that didn't exist. So, uh, Great Britain with two through. Unfortunately, Nicky Gooch fell. Matthew Jasper and Wilf O'Reilly into the quarterfinals. Well, it's a really exciting sport, and that continues on Thursday. Now, the ice hockey has reached the quarter-final stage. Strong contingent. And of course, their main interest is in this first quarter-final and in the third. The French are here tonight to support the women's relay team. Number 29, Matt Jasper, 19. Won his semi-final yesterday, second in the World Championship last year in Sydney. Eighteen there uh, is uh, Edchoff, who's in the second heat. Koreans warming up for the appearance of Yoon Ho Lee. So the introduction. And skating onto the ice, we've got the uh, chief referee, who for the men's events is an Englishman, Ken uh, Pendry. That's Macmillan, the New Zealander, who made such an impression yesterday, fourth in the World Championships uh, last year. The mark has been placed out, almost like... Uh, Ice hockey pucks. To the start. And if they take now by a skater, there are marksmen around who get them back very, very quickly indeed. Ishihara there of uh, Japan. Canada. Canada. The world record holder at 3,000 meters. Number 39. Ishihara, Japan. Japan. A tremendous Et atmosphere building in the uh, arena for this new Olympic Korea. event. Korea. 45, Yoon Ho Lee, the Korea. Get ready to go to the, heat box. the 1991 Blackburn, overall Canada. world champion. That's uh, taking points at each of the distances. Matt Jasper looks very relaxed. He's certainly growing in stature all the time. 
skated really well yesterday to qualify. Took charge. Danio, second uh, four years ago when this was a demonstration event, the Canadian. Fastest time yesterday in the first heat, 133.21. The world record, 131.80, held by Kawasaki of Japan. Lee, the world champion of 1500 meters, fell on the final bend in the Calgary fi final in this event, won by Wilf O'Reilly. He's 26. Jasper, by far the youngest in this uh, heat. In fact, the second youngest in the quarterfinals. We've got a 17-year-old appearing later on for China. But uh, Jasper at 19, the second youngest. 1,000 metres. This track, a fraction over 111 metres. So they circuit the track nine times. Lining up now. Referee Mr. Pendry having a word with the uh, officials. On the inside, we've got Lee of Korea. Then Ishimara of Japan. Danio, the Canadian, nearest the camera with the worst draw right on the outside is Jasper. And the draw is important to try and get a position into this first bend. They start like uh, sprinters in a track event, running for the first eight, nine strides, and then glide run up to first bend. But it's important to hit it right. The quarterfinals the of the Olympic 1,000 metres. This is the first. Nine laps. Oh, and uh, Jasper got a very good start from the outside. But straight away, it's Danio, the Canadian, who goes in front. Jasper's lost his place, back in fourth place now. Danio leads. Coming up on the outside is the Japanese, going very fast indeed, Ishihara. This is going to be a quick one. They're really setting a pace right from the start. Ishihara leads, Danio in second place. Then Lee of Korea and Jasper right on the outside, trying to look for space, close back in on the bend there but can't find a way through. Ishihara in front with six to go. Coming up in the outside now is Lee, the Korean, just chops the Japanese slightly. Daniel Fenrun on the inside. He goes into second place. And Jasper looking for room on the inside. Has he got it? Yes, he has. He's got into third place now. And number 39, Ishihara, the world record holder at 3,000 metres, is trailing at the moment. Lee of Korea leading, Danio in second place, Jasper Great Britain third. The first two qualify, three to go. And it's still Lee of Korea in front, Danio in second place. Jasper, oh, he missed it on that bend. He went very, very wide indeed. And surely he's lost his chance of qualifying. Lee of Korea leading, Danio in second place. Ishihara comes through to third, and Jasper fights him off, but... Uh, the Japanese and the Britain with real problems. The leading two well away, and they come in now to finish, and these two qualified. Lee of Korea, Danio of Canada. Jasper in third place, Ishihara fourth. It was always going to be difficult. The time, 133.59, not no, quite the fastest no, time, which was set yesterday by uh, Danio, but pretty quick anyway. 133.21 is the fastest time so far. Uh, I think I said yesterday, by the way, for the heats, there were two days ago on Tuesday. They've had a day's rest. But they've got a very hard oh, night's work tonight with three rounds. So Jasper found this very hard indeed. He made a slight mistake on one of the bends, but he was in contention, went wide. And Lee of Korea and Dagna of Canada come through to qualify. Hugging the uh, bends very tightly indeed. Canadian didn't have to press it. Knew he was going to qualify. So they're into the semi finals later. Netherlands. Republic of China. It was the worst possible draw for Matt Jasper. Number 11. Frederick Blackburn, Canada. Canada. Numero 30, Willie O'Reilly. And uh, Will Ferrari's out on the ice already. European champion, champion of the world, double gold medal winner in the Calgary Games when this was a demonstration sport. 
Very composed, organized athlete. Knows how to prepare himself mentally. Bob Coakman, his coach, is uh, watching back in London with Des Lynham. Number 11, Freddie uh, Blackburn, only 19 from Canada. Looked impressive in the heats. Will Ferrari, member of the Mohawks Club. He's 27. Number 18, Erchoff. The only entrant from the uh, unified team. He's 21. Comes from Gorky. And O'Reilly is drawn on the inside. Next to him is De Reuter, the man we haven't seen from Belgium. Then Erchoff, nearest the camera, Ready. Blackburn of Canada. Thousand metres, the second quarter final, and O'Reilly straight in front. Nine laps of the track. O'Reilly leads. Erchoff in second place. De Reuter is third. Blackburn of Canada in fourth place. And they're not going to let O'Reilly dictate the pace. It's De Reuter now who leads. Blackburn in second place for Canada. O'Reilly third. Erchoff fourth. Seven laps to go. The tall Belgian in front. Then the Canadian, who was very impressive yes, uh, two days ago. O'Reilly in third place, looking very relaxed. The first two qualify. Erchoff who only qualified because uh, someone else was disqualified for pushing and bumping and boring. De Reuter, the leader. Blackman in second place. O'Reilly making no move yet. Looks to be slightly slower than the first one, but uh, with four laps to go, they'll surely uh, start to attack now. It's De Reuter leading, and there O'Reilly goes. O'Reilly on the inside with a dramatic change of pace. Came from third to first and made it look easy. O'Reilly leads. Blackman of Canada in second place. Erchoff, the unified team, is third. And De Reuter in fourth place. Two laps to go. O'Reilly, champion of the world, champion of Europe, is in front. Blackman of Canada second. Erchoff, unified team, third. De Reuter in fourth place. There's the bell. Less than 100 metres to go. And O'Reilly is making this race his own. He's making qualifying look very, very easy indeed. O'Reilly wins, Blackman second, 133.65. First time, a very, very organised piece of skating. He's hardly blowing. He actually ran the race in the sense that he organised himself totally. He saw the space, and when he was uh, in a position to attack, he took advantage and was good enough to get there. He came from third to first in that moment and then just sorted the race out from the front. Blackman, the second qualifier in second place. But that was a dramatic change of pace by O'Reilly, and that's the key to his success. He's a beautifully balanced athlete, too. So O'Reilly into the uh, semi-final, along with Freddie Blackman, the 19 years old Canadian. Numero 51. Who's made a big impression Mike here? New Zealand. So the qualifiers so far: Lee of Korea, Dania of Canada, O'Reilly of Great Britain, Blackburn of Canada. This the draw for the next one. Macmillan fourth in the World Championships in 1991. The tall New Zealander, very impressive yesterday. Won his heat. Attacked very early with the third fastest time of the day a lot of people thought he was a bit lucky to be fourth in the world championships last year but he's shown he wasn't Kim of Korea the world champion at 89 at this distance he's also the world champion at the moment at 500 meters and 3,000 meters that's a Velzibor from Holland Mark Velzibor his sister is uh, Wilf Arali's girlfriend and that's uh, Liani Lai of China, the youngest man in the competition, only 17. Second to O'Reilly in the first qualifying heat two days ago. Well, Mike McMillan with time to spare to smile at his uh, teammates. Kim Hoon Kim.
first two go through. It's going to be a pretty tense evening all round with the uh, quarterfinals, semi-finals and final on one start. night. Kim drawn on the inside, then Macmillan in two. In three, Belzebor, and then Lai of China. Ready. Elzebor, I think, a little unsettled. Kim is away very quickly for Korea. It's Kim of Korea, Macmillan of New Zealand in second place. The Chinese Lai going up on the outside and takes the lead. Lai leads the 17-year-old. Kim in second place. Kim making an attack and takes first place back. Elzebor goes into second place. And coming up on the outside is Macmillan. He attacked uh, in the first round from a long way out. He's very confident indeed. Although he's got there, he's just gliding at the moment. Six laps to go. Macmillan leads. Lai in second place. Belsey Ball third. Going up alongside him is the Chinese. And they're beginning to wind it up now. Macmillan leading. Kim in second place. Belzebor third. Lai is fourth. The first two qualify. Three laps to go when they pass the finishing line this time. Still Macmillan in front. He's a very aggressive skater. Very tall for a short track skater, but very effective. He went very wide there. They were almost led into Korean, but they've opened up a gap now on Belzebor. Bell this time, and they've got a very healthy gap indeed. Macmillan in front, the Korean Kim in second place, and these two will qualify. Lion Belzebor go out. 132.79, the fastest time clocked in these Olympic championships so far. Macmillan is a very aggressive skater indeed. Perhaps the ideal build on the short track is to be a little bit squat, a bit like Wilfred Riley, about 5'7 uh, and just over 10 stones. But uh, this man contradicts that. He's very tall, he's very aggressive, and he's very good. And that fourth in the World Championship was no accident, obviously. So, Cross the line together. So that's Macmillan. And Kim through to the semi-finals. And we come to the uh, fourth quarter-final. Number six is Blanchard of Belgium, Italy. European champion of 1,500 meters. It's Mark Lackey of Canada. Won the 500 here in the pre-Olympic Games warm-up. Ernhoff of Italy. Fast time yesterday. Inside 134. And Kawasaki of Japan. The world record holder at this distance. 131.80. Set in 1990. When he was the, became the world champion. Come on, Canada. The cry. The Canadians with Danio through and Blackburn through already. So they've got two through of their three skaters. Ready. Good start on the inside by Blanchard. Holds the uh, lead on the bend. Canadian uh, looking for space. Mark Lackey. That's Ernhoff now of Italy who's taking the lead. And off leads Blanchard in second place. Lackey goes up on the inside like Wilfred Riley and takes the lead. So it's Mark Lackey now looking to become the third Canadian into the semi finals. Lackey leads. Ernhoff in second place. Blanchard is third. Tactical race this one. Now Saki back in fourth place. 
Lackey just left room there for Blanchot, and Blanchot took advantage. The Belgium in front, the Canadian second, the Italian third, the Japanese in fourth place. The pace stepping up all the time. Mark Lackey, 24. The 89 world champion at 500 metres. Skittles, one of the markers, out of line. And it's replaced, but Lackey's got a good lead now. Three laps to go, Blanchot in second place. And the Japanese Kawasaki, the world record holder, is in trouble. Two to go, two to qualify. Lackey leads, Blanchot second. Earnhardt third, the Italian. And Kawasaki trying to get back in the race. Here's the bell, still Lackey in front. Blanchot in second place. They look like the qualifiers. Earnhardt of Italy trying to attack. Can he find room? And no, he can't. Lackey wins. Blanchard second. 134.71. The early pace was slow. It stepped up for the two qualifiers, Lackey and Blanchard. And the Canadians, so, so strong. They've now got three through into the semi finals. Britain with one, Wolf O'Reilly. Jasper with what can only be described as an almost impossible draw. Lackey in trouble there, Blanchot on the inside. Powerful figure. So, Mark Lackey. Mark Been an international for five years, so he knows his way around. And Lackey wins it, Blanchot in second place. Celebrates qualifying, and the semi-finals follow. Mesdames, Messieurs, vous allez pouvoir assister à la demi-finale du 3000 mètres relais dames. All sorts of uh, painted faces around the place, and also uh, fancy dress. There's a bit of a festival atmosphere. This, of course, the first time short track has been held in the Olympic Games, but we now know that Wilfer Raleigh, the man who uh, won this event when it was a demonstration sport for Great Britain four years ago, is in the last eight. The judge for the competition, dame, is... The referee for the ladies' competition is... Monsieur Michel Véro, Canada. Canada. Next event will be the women's relay over 3,000 meters. The team's, team's just about Canada. to be introduced. Italy. And the uh, relay is a real roller derby event. They can change when they like. Most teams change every lap. And in this, we've got Canada, Italy, Holland, and the United States. Get ready to go to the heat box. The world record held by Italy. Set in 1988 at 4 minutes 45.88. And just announcing the draw order, and France, of course, getting a tremendous cheer from the local supporters. They go in the second semi final. Canada, uh, in this one, have got a tremendous record. They've won the World Championship for the last three years, 89, 90, and 91. One of the Italians, number 31, is uh, Colturi. And when you're watching this, uh, it's important to concentrate on the skaters on the outside because you'll find the uh, next one waiting to take over is skating alongside on the inside to get up speed the mexican wave going around this uh, arena which holds uh, about nine thousand people i should think there are about uh, seven thousand here at the moment Dutch team very strong. But they go in the second uh, semi final.
So what they're doing at the moment is taking advantage of the uh, chance to have a thorough warm-up. So all eight teams on the ice. In the second semi-final, we've got the unified team, France, the People's Republic of China and Japan. The first two in each uh, semi-final are going to the final, which is the last event tonight. Incidentally, the men's semi-finals, if they run to time in the 1,000 metres, is due to start at six minutes past seven. So there's not much rest for them. And the final itself will take place, according to the uh, strict time table laid on here, at 36 minutes past seven. Confirmation of the order. It's the Italian team having a last minute discussion. 29, Canclini, the overall European champion. 32 is La Torre. 30 is Candido. And 34, Schiella. Number 46 is Simone Velzibor, one of the two sisters in the Dutch team. And actually, they are drawn in this first semi-final. I thought for a moment they were in the second semi-final. They're not. <coughs> so the rink's been cleared now. We've got the four teams almost ready. 45, Monique Velzibor, the number one skater of Haaland. Natalie Lambert for Canada, wearing number eight. They're the favourites. So as the lineup, it's Canada on the inside, then Italy, Go to the start. United States of America, and Holland nearest the camera. Ready. Most of them change every lap, some at a lap and a half. They can go as long as they want, though, without changing, but obviously it's uh, advantageous to take a quick breather. Please. And Courtswell is the lead-off girl for Holland on the near side. So they've got 27 laps to go. Holland lead at the moment. Canada in second place. The change over here, a quick shot. And the Americans went down then. And so Canada lead at the moment. Kathy Turner was the American with a problem, but Holland now come through into first place. Canada take over there, but uh, Holland stay in front. Still the Dutch in front. Number 46, Simone Velzibor. Number eight for Canada is Lambert. The Canadians with a push start there, take the lead. This is Sylvie Daigle, the world record holder at 500 metres, but knocked out of the first round two days ago. Canada lead, Holland in second place. Number 43 there is Ernst for Holland. Canadians changing every lap and a half. Number nine for them is uh, Piero. Number five takes over, Kutra. And 44 for Holland, Van Kortsveld. But Canada building up their lead. Canada lead, Holland in second place. And closing fast now, we've got the United States of America in spite of that slip by Kathy Turner. Good leg there by America, and it's uh, Ziegelmeyer now for America in third place, trying to close the gap, but the Canadians have opened up a uh, three or four metre lead. Monique Belzebul, the top Dutch girl now, goes up into second place, very, very close indeed, 
And the next Dutch girl is 46, Simone Veldeboer, her sister. But Canada still in front. Holland in second place. United States third. Italy a long way back in fourth place. Number five for Canada. Quatrone. Still Canada leading. Coming round with 14 laps to go. It's very close. Lambert is number eight in front. 43 is Ernst now for Holland. Oh, and the Dutch have lost it. She's skidded into the barrier. And Holland in real trouble. One of the favourites for the gold medal. And they're now back in fourth place. Total disaster. And there was no reason for it. Canada now with a very comfortable lead indeed. United States in second place, Italy a third, and Holland more than half a lap back in fourth place. Well, that's really opened it up now. It makes it fairly simple for the lead two to qualify. They needn't take risks, and the Dutch are going to be so disappointed. Canadian number five is uh, Catrone, coming around with nine laps to go. The Americans have closed right up. Number 50 for them, Donal. Closing all the time on Canada, but I think Canada taking it fairly easily. Italy in third place, and they're almost half a lap behind the uh, Canadian leaders, and the Dutch more than half a lap behind. Sylvie Daigle, the world record holder, 500 meters, hands on to number nine, Pedro. The American is Peterson, Amy Peterson, who's taking over. They're closing on the Canadians all the time. But really, it's quite an important because the first two are so far away now after the Dutch fell that they can take it easy with the final to come later on tonight. Three laps left. Lambert for Canada. Lambert handing on now to Sylvie Daigle. And this is just about an hour cruising home with one lap to go. Canada and the United States sure to be the two qualifiers. Holland have got into third place, showing their potential now, but they lost it with that call. 442-08. Holland finished third, Italy four. The two qualifiers, Canada and the United States. The world record held by Italy at 445.88. And we've just seen the Canadians and the Americans, I suspect, break that world record. 442.08, the final time, a new world record for Canada and I suspect the Americans in second place also cracked the old world record. I suppose the people in it knew what was going on there. Take some explaining that one, though. Now, the point is this, that uh, Wilf O'Reilly is through to the semi-finals of the men's individual short track speed skating. We'll be going live for it shortly. Let's show you first, though, in case you've just got in, how Matt Jasper failed to get that far in his heat. Oh, and uh, Jasper got a very good start from the outside. But straight away, it's Danio, the Canadian who goes in front. Jasper's lost his place, back in fourth place now. Danio leads. Coming up on the outside is the Japanese, going very fast indeed, Ishihara. And this is going to be a quick one. They're really setting a pace right from the start. Ishihara leads, Danio in second place. Then Lee of Korea, and Jasper right on the outside, trying to look for space, close back in on the bend there but can't find a way through. Ishihara in front with six to go. Coming up in the outside now is Lee, the Korean, just chops the Japanese slightly. Daniel Fernrun on the inside. He goes into second place. And Jasper looking for room on the inside. Has he got it? Yes, he has. He's got into third place now. And number 39, Ishihara, the world record holder at 3,000 meters, is trailing at the moment. Lee of Korea leading, Danu in second place, Jasper Great Britain third. The first two qualify, three to go. 
and it's still Lee of Korea in front, Danio in second place, Jasper, oh, he missed it on that bend, he went very, very wide indeed, and surely he's lost his chance of qualifying. During uh, these Olympic Games, set the fastest time in the third uh, quarterfinal tonight at 132.79. So, there's nothing easy when you reach the semi-finals of the Olympic Games. The first two go through. And we await the entrance of the athletes. The stadium filling up all the time. Between seven and 8,000 here now, and it's Bedlam. And certainly short track skating has taken on. Started uh, 1905 in uh, North America, but didn't really receive international recognition until about 1967, when the short track skaters were accepted by the uh, International Skating Union. But now an Olympic sport, and a very exciting one as well. The referees out in the center. I think they're just checking the draw sheets. The semi-finals of the 1,000 meters to be followed by the finals in uh, about half an hour's time. There'll be the B final as well uh, for the four beaten semi-finalists. It's a truly international sport. There are about uh, 15 to 20 nations involved in the men's and women's events. I do find it a bit surprising that uh, for the demonstration sports last time, they had uh, rather more individual events than they've got here. There's only one uh, event for men and women individually and two relays. The crowd getting a bit impatient because they're getting behind the clock. In the semi-finals, all three Canadians have got through and two Koreans. Will Ferrari, champion of Europe, champion of the world. But this, I suspect, the title he wants most of all. Number 14. Michel Denio, Canada. Canada. Numéro 51. Number 51. They're still Mike putting Mike water down on the bends at the moment. Zealand. They've uh, resurfaced the ice. No sign yet of the uh, four competitors in this semi final. But the officials are now ready. So in this, we've got a, a Briton, a Korean, a Canadian, and a New Zealander. Number 14 is Danio, the Canadian, who was second to Arati four years ago in Calgary. may be able to hear the singing in the background. There's tremendous enthusiasm. A really gladiatorial atmosphere. 43. Just taking a last drink there is uh, Kim Hoon Kim. Will be in the next heat. Will Ferrari, composed as ever. He's one of the most organised athletes that I've ever known, mentally and physically. A lot of that due to Bob Copeman, who's back in the London studio as coach. One of the few uh, coaches in Great Britain who works on scientific methods.
and with O'Reilly being short of ice time, he's worked out a series of exercises for Wolf to do, uh, which means Wolf's not too bothered if he doesn't get on the ice. And he's certainly got a marvellous attitude towards the sport. The British team, by the way, uh, didn't like the ice in the training ring here. It was too soft. And the British Olympic Association made a swift move, and they've been training in Shawbury. Archie Marshall, the short track coach, taking a look there. And the team manager, Tony Jordan. Number six is in the second semi final. That's Blanchon of Belgium. So too is uh, 43. Number 11 on the floor ground is Blackburn, one of the three Canadians who's through. And at last, the four skaters in this first semi final are on the ice. Number 51, Mike McMillan. That's McMillan, the New tall Zealand. New Zealander. The fastest man in the game so far. The world record held by Kawasaki of Japan at 131.80. Yun Ho Lee, 26. Danio, second four years ago. The world record holder at 1,500 metres from Canada. World champion at 1,500 metres in 89. And skating short track since he was 12. McMillan, Mike McMillan, fourth in the world championship for New Zealand. Last year, and has showed his quality in every round so far. The fastest man on the ice in the Olympic Games in 1,000 metres. So they looks like they're going to line up with McMillan on the inside. Then Daniel, the uh, Canadian. Lee of Korea. And O'Reilly with the worst draw right on the outside. 1,000 metres, nine laps of the track. The first two go into the Olympic final. Ready? O'Reilly's gone very, very quickly from the worst draw, and O'Reilly leads McMillan in second place. In third place is Lee of Korea, and fourth, Daniel of Canada. Eight laps to go, O'Reilly leads, New Zealand second, Korea third, Canada four, and O'Reilly out of trouble in front of the moment, and the Canadian Daniel wants to take a hand. O'Reilly won't let him. Daniel goes up second, though, from fourth. Still Britain in front, Canada second, New Zealand third, Korea four. O'Reilly, Daniel, McMillan, and Lee, six laps left. O'Reilly out of trouble at the moment. And there goes Daniel. And the Canadian, second four years ago, has taken O'Reilly. O'Reilly now in second place. McMillan tried to come through. And O'Reilly almost lost his balance then as they come round with four to go. It's Daniel, O'Reilly, McMillan. And McMillan squeezes O'Reilly. And O'Reilly's down. The world champion, the European champion, is out of the race. Daniel leads, Lee in second place, Macmillan is third. O'Reilly up and skating, but now he's a, a spectator. Two laps to go, Daniel leads, Lee in second place, Macmillan is third. And poor O'Reilly can only watch the bell now. And it's Lee of Korea. Lee leading, Daniel in second place, Macmillan goes second. And Lee Korea wins. Salutes his fans, Macmillan, New Zealand in second place. Danio hangs his head, and O'Reilly skates round. Well, he's showing no emotion at all, but that is a new world record by the Korean, 131.31. Disaster for O'Reilly. He hit the barriers hard, but no hope from there on. This is where it happened. Look at Macmillan cutting in there. O'Reilly lost it. Tried to recover, didn't, took Macmillan wide and hit the barrier. So, the Olympic dream 
for Wilbur Raleigh is over. He was clearly uh, well out of trouble in front, uh, but it's a real bruising battle when they get as close as this. So now we come to the second semi-final. In this, we've got two Canadians. Number 16, Lackey. And number 11, Blackburn. There's also Kim of Korea. So and Blanchard of Belgium. Uh, the qualifiers confirmed as Lee of Korea with a new world record, 131.31. Beating the record that's been held by Kawasaki since 1990. And Macmillan confirmed in second place. Well, these are the four in the uh, second semi-final. And the two Canadians have just seen Danio go out and look very dis disappointed indeed. He really did. But the two who got through uh, really beat Danio on merit. And Raleigh's so unlucky to take that tumble. But this is a very hazardous sport indeed. And obviously it was felt no offence had been committed. And certainly the replay didn't suggest there had been an offence. Sixteen is uh, Mark Lackey, twenty-four, world champion at uh, five hundred metres and eighty-nine. It's Kim of Korea, number forty-three, drawn on the inside. Then Blanchard, Belgium, then Blackburn, Canada, and Lackey, Canada. So for two of them, a place is waiting in the Olympic final. Blanchard, the big Belgium in front. Blackburn, the nineteen years old Canadian, in second place. Third place is Kim of Korea and fourth Lackey of Canada. Pace not very hectic at all. Blackman starting to warm it up, pressing on the outside, followed by his fellow Canadian. That's Blackman Canada, Lackey Canada, Blanchard Belgian. And coming up on the outside now is the Korean Kim. And Kim takes the lead. Kim, Kihu Kim, world champion in 89 at this distance. 24. Uh, Kim leading, five laps left. Blackman of Canada in second place. Lackey Canada third. Blanchard, the big Belgian, the European champion at 1500 metres in fourth place. Kim looking very comfortable in front. No attack as yet. Blackman's looking to go. And it's Blackman coming on the outside, but he can't get there. Came very wide and came back in. Still Kim career leading. Blackman in second place. In third place, Lackey of Canada, two laps left. Korea in front, Canada second and third, Belgium four, and Blanchard looks to be struggling for speed at the moment. This time the bell, 111 metres left. Kim Korea leads, Blackman in second place, can't find a way through, looks inside, then looks to go outside, but can't do it, but does qualify. So, Kim Korea wins it, Blackman in second place, those two qualify. The Canadians with three semi-finalists only get one man through into the final. So the finalists are Kim Korea, Blackman of Canada, Lee of Korea, and Macmillan of New Zealand. The time for Lee, 132.18. A little slower than the first one, but it started a lot more slowly, in fact. But that was an impressive piece of skating by uh, Kim. The world champion at the moment at 503,000 metres and showing his versatility. Ladies and gentlemen, the semi-finals for the 3,000... Well, we'll be back for the final live. Sadly, Wilf O'Reilly will not be in it. Looking on the bright side, he could still get a medal in Saturday's relay. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it in slow motion because the problem seemed to start about 40 seconds into the race. Mm -hmm. Have a look at this and, and tell us what you think. Tell us what's happening here then, Bob. Well, he went off very well. He got a good start. Was controlling it nicely from the front. 
all looked nice and relaxed there, didn't it? No yeah, problems yes, at all. Yes. You'd put your money on him here, wouldn't you? A absolutely ideal. Yeah. Still going round. He's still going to stay in control for about another two and a half laps. And he's beaten all these guys often, hasn't he? Um, yes, but I mean, they're all very high-class skaters. Mm -hmm. right. Coasting. Yes, still in control at the front. So about another six seconds to go. Now, can we go into slow motion? We'll slow it down here for you, yeah, if just, we can. Just, just a little bit. What are we looking for there then, Bob? Well, we're looking for a blade goes away. On the right foot? Uh, no, that, that's his left. Mm -hmm. Now his right is placed. Yeah, that's all right. Mm -hmm. His left's all right. No problems there, were there? Hold on. I think, Bob, I think he was touched here by the New Zealander. No, there we are. Yeah. Go, go back. Well, I don't think we can do oh, that at this okay. moment. You know, technically sound as though we are. It's a bit tricky for us okay, to do that just okay, for the moment. But if it's a little bit after 40 seconds, as you'll see, the skate goes away and the knee goes away. Now, he recovers from that, but it's... It, he doesn't fully recover, it's, it's unbalanced him. Mm -hmm. And you'll see, now he has the added complications of fairly shortly Mr. McMillan coming in, mm -hmm. while he's, he's still fighting to get back into a proper balance. Mm. There's bound to be some, you know, um, sort of touching between the skaters, isn't there? I mean, you have to put up with that, don't you? You're not allowed to push, are you? No. No, you've also got to remember that, um, I don't know what the quality of the ice is, but uh, certainly in the, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. it looked pretty good. Now, yeah. it's, assuming that it's pretty cold, should be about minus eight, minus nine. Um, yeah. And that, that is very difficult to keep control of. Yeah. But it's one of those sports, isn't it, where the slightest of accidents and you're done for, really? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, do you think there's been too much pressure on him? Have we been sort of chauvinistic about all this, saying, well, we need a medal and this is the man to do it, and loading him with it, as it were? Um, he can take pressure, but to, to give you an idea, at the opening ceremony, there were eight short track speed skaters carrying flags, mm -hmm. you know, which is an indication that eight countries thought they had a, you know, a pretty good medal hope. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you think he'll take this now? Oh, uh, absolutely fine. He'll, he'll be extremely disappointed for... Yeah. Uh, the rest of the day, and then he'll set himself to win the World Championships, which is coming up in Denver in April. I think we can show you what you wanted to see now in a, in a, in a bit more slowly. Um, have another look at this and describe it to us, will you? Now, Bob. I'm just, I'm just waiting to see that knee actually go. I think, again, we've just gone past it. You well, see, see, now he's trying to recover back. He's come right up out of the skating position. He looks all right there, doesn't he? No, no. Uh, no? When, when they're skating this sort of speed, sub 10 second lap, um, the bend in the knee, they're sitting right down. If you mm. notice then, he came right up out of it. Yeah. Well, he's got chances again, hasn't he? Because he goes in the relay. Yes, and uh, I don't envy David Coleman commentating on it. Well, we never envy him uh, commentating on it, but there we are. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Disappointing uh, for you and certainly for, for him. Um, we're just going to take a look now at uh, the second uh, of the semi-finals, uh, and it happened like this. He really has shown that finishing fourth in the World Championship last year in Sydney was no fluke. A lot of people said... Well, a lot of the top people weren't there. But he's shown he's got the ability. And he's been very, very aggressive in his skating right from round one. Looks more like uh, a long track skater, actually, because he's very tall. They do say that... Uh, the bottom's a bit closer to the track in the short track. 
Well, you're better off. You can keep a bit of balance, especially on the bends, but uh, McMullen contradicts that. June Holdy is the Korean who's the reigning overall world champion. It's a point system with all distances taken into account. Well, 45. He's 26. He's a world champion at 1,500 metres. Thumbs up from Macmillan, who throughout the games has looked very, very relaxed. 43 is the other Korean. Kai Hoon Kim. He's 24. Semi finalist four years ago. He's the world champion at 500 metres and 3,000. And that's young Freddie Blackwood, who's only 19. The Canadian, three years in international. A high school student still. Perhaps the outsider of the three Canadians, but he's proved the best. The new world record set in the semi final by Jun Ho Lee of Korea, 1 minute 31.27 seconds. The Korean supporters here in considerable numbers. Obviously expected something tonight, and they've been rewarded with two in the final. So being called to the start line now by the referee. It's Kim on the inside at the moment. No changing positions, getting the right draw order. Blackman takes the inside one, then Kim. Uh, again, the draw order been called wrongly. It's Lee now has gone to the inside. Blackman, and Kim, and Macmillan on the outside. This, the first ever Olympic short track skating final. 1,000 metres, nine laps. Two Koreans, a Canada. Canadian and a New Zealander. It's the big New Zealander in front at the moment. In second place is Lee of Korea. Third is Blackburn. And in fourth place is Kim. Pace fairly modest, but now winding it up is Blackburn of Canada. But the Canadian hits the front. So it's Blackburn of Canada leading. McMillan tries to take it on. Coming up on the outside very quickly was Kim, the Korean. So it's Kim of Korea in front now, the world champion in 89 at this distance, the reigning world champion at 500 and 3,000 metres. Macmillan, New Zealand second, Blackburn of Canada in third place. And in fourth place is Lee. Still Kim first, Korea leading, New Zealand second, Canada third, Korea four, four laps left. Kai Hoon Kim. Making the bid now for Olympic glory. The, the winner here will be the first ever gold medalist in the Olympic short track. This is the first time it's been held as an Olympic event. Two laps left, 222 metres. And it is still Kim in front. Blackman in second place. Lee goes third. Macmillan struggling in fourth place. The bell. And it's still Kim, the Korean leading. And Kim has skated his way surely to Olympic gold. Kim wins it, Blackman second, and in third place was Lee with Macmillan fourth. So, the first ever Olympic gold medal is won by a Korean, Kai Hoon Kim. And the time, a new world record, 130.70. That's the second time he's broken the world record tonight, and he's taken nearly two seconds off his previous world record time. And he's done it when it mattered most of all in the Olympic final. Yeah, Kai Hoon Kim, 24. Semi-finalist when Wilf O'Reilly won four years ago in the demonstration event. The reigning world champion at 500 metres and 3,000 metres becomes the Olympic champion at 1,000.
So he takes the gold medal. Goes across to the very, very powerful contingent of Korean supporters. And the Koreans with two medals here. Blackburn, the 19-year-old Canadian, tries to get in the attack. On the outside is Macmillan. But the leader, number 43, Kai Hoon Kim. Trying to hold that bend. Watch the other Korean try to get through on the inside, which he does. So it's goal for Korea. Blackburn at the moment of Canada in second place. Then uh, Jun Ho Lee in third place. So it's gold and bronze for Korea and silver for the teenage Canadian, Freddie Blackburn. And a new world record in the process. Oh, can't be much wrong with the ice here because they've been really skating faster and faster. All four teams in the women's relay broke the world record, the four finalists. And we've had the world record broken tonight twice by Kim. And he undoubtedly has proved a true Olympic champion. To win Olympic gold and break a world record in the process, having broken the world record previously in the semi-final as well, that is a true champion. The second semi-final of the men's 5,000 meter relay. Canada drawn on the inside. Very strong team indeed. Japan in lane two, Great Britain, Matt Jasper in lane three, and on the outside in lane four, Italy. Tough semi-final. The Canadians must be favourites here. They had three men in the last eight of the thousand Ready. meters. Straight away, it's Canada in front. Italy coming up on the outside. Canada lead. Italy second. Great Britain third. Japan fourth. That's the order, the changeover coming up. They can change as much as they like, or when they like, and Great Britain slip back to fourth place there on the change. Some changing at one and a half laps, some every lap. Canada in front, Italy second, Japan third, Great Britain in fourth place. So Nicky Gooch for Great Britain, handing on to Wilfo Riley now. The Canadians. Number 11, Freddie Brackman, who got the silver medal in the uh, 1,000 metres. Italy in second place. Number 29 for Great Britain, third, is Matt Jasper. Still Blackman leading for Canada. Italy second. Now in third place for Great Britain is Horspool, the veteran of the team. Not much between them, though. Canada leading. Italy second. Great Britain third. Now going for Great Britain is Nicky Gooch, the youngster. And in fourth place, Japan, and uh, Britain and Japan losing a lot of valuable ground. O'Reilly goes now for Great Britain, he's got to make up a lot of space, and he's doing just that. Still Canada in front, Italy second. Next to go is number 29, Matt Jasper. And O'Reilly and Jasper have closed the gap quite re remarkably, really, on uh, Italy. Now number 28, Horsepool for Great Britain. They've lost a bit of ground on the changeover. Canada leading, Italy second, Great Britain third, Nicky Gooch now skating for Great Britain, Japan in fourth place. The first two qualifiers, they come round now with 34 laps to go. And Canada move up on the outside. Number 15 for them is Gagnon. A very, very strong qualifying heat, this. Jasper going for Great Britain, and he's lost third place now to Japan. So it's Canada leading, and the Italians have gone right out. The Italians have lost their place entirely. They were second, they hit the boards, and they're certainly not going to qualify. So it's Canada in front, Japan in second place. In third place, Great Britain. Nicky Gooch is the man on the ice. And next to go for Great Britain is uh, Wilf O'Reilly. He's got a lot of work to do. Japan and Canada with quite a big lead. Japan take it on now. Canada second and Great Britain in third place. Oh, the Japanese actually on their changing of taking over the Canadians and taking over very effectively. And in second place for Canada is uh, Danio, who was eighth in the uh, final of the 1,000 metres. Now on the ice again is Wilfo Raleigh for Great Britain. 
and he really is burning the ice. Cutting right back on the Canadians. He's cut it enormously back. Next to go for Great Britain is Jasper. They've got a lot of work to do in the closing stages of this race. 24 laps to go. Japan with quite a big lead. Canada in second place. Great Britain third. On the ice now for Britain is Horsepool. The Britons are changing every lap. Moving in to take over is number 27, Nicky Gooch. And the Canadians have opened the gap again. So it's Japan leading, Canada second, Great Britain third, Italy a long way back after that fall in fourth place. O'Reilly comes in again. He's the man doing most of the work. Hands on to number 29, Jasper. These are the top two in the British team. But they've got an awful lot to do to get Britain into this final. The first two qualify. Japan, about 10 metres clear of Canada, or about 20 metres clear of Great Britain. Italy, half a lap back. The Japanese holding their lead. Number 11 going for Canada is uh, Freddie Blackburn, the silver medalist in the 1,000 metres. Uh, almost took them into the lead. Japan and Canada absolutely locked together. Great Britain in third place. 15 laps left. The first two qualify. And unless there's a major disaster in front, Great Britain will not get into this final. Yes, Japan with about a two-meter lead from Canada. Great Britain in third place. Again, it's O'Reilly on the ice now for Great Britain. But the gap has opened up to about 30 meters between second and third. The Japanese and the Canadians appear to be fairly relaxed in front. Japan still with uh, a very slight advantage. And Canada trying to take it on. Uh, but they lost it on the change. Italy nearly a lap behind after the fall. Wolf Raleigh doing his best to get Britain back in the race. But they need a fall in front to qualify. Coming around now with eight laps left. Still the Japanese looking very relaxed. They don't have to do much except stay upright. Canada too. Horse pool for Great Britain. In third place, handing on to uh, Nicky Gooch. But they're almost half a lap behind the second place. The Italians are almost a full lap behind. And Japan and Canada appear to me to be absolutely coasting at the moment. Matt Jasper in third place for Great Britain. But they can't close the gap at all. Japan still holding Canada. The world record set by the Koreans in the uh, first round at 7 minutes 14.07. And obviously be outside that. But really, the leading two teams haven't got a great deal to do, except to uh, stay upright. Japan coasting home in front. They win. Canada stay in second place. And Great Britain in third place, will not qualify for the final. So, Britain out of it again. We now join the final in mid-race. Just under halfway in the 5,000-metre relay for the Olympic Championship in the men's event. And a tremendous battle going on in front between Korea, the new world record holders. They set that record in the first round, and Canada, right on world record place. 
The leader of the moment, a song of Korea. Change over there. And the Canadian chasing is number 15, Gagnon. The weakest of the Canadians, he's lost a bit of ground. The Koreans changing every one and a half laps, which seems to be efficient. Both teams change then, though. They can change when they like. This is Lee, the bronze medalist for Korea in the individual 1,000 metres, being chased by Lackey of Canada. And the Koreans beginning to break away. But a good change over there by Canada made a difference. The leader is number 43, Kim, the gold medalist of the 1,000 metres, but he's been given a hard time. Daniel Canada, who hands on now to Freddie Blackburn, silver medalist in the 1,000 metres. Career lead, Canada in second place. Both teams inside the world record at the moment. 17 laps left. New Zealand in third place, and Japan four. What a race this is. Less than a metre between them. Both teams about to change on this near side. 45 is Ho. Right behind him is Lucky of Canada. And both teams are changing every lap and a half. Canada gets the change. Canada takes the lead. The crowd erupts. Number 14, the Canadian now in front, is Michelle Daigneau. And taking it on now for Canada is Freddie Blackburn, silver medalist in the individual event. Right behind him is Song of Korea. Inches between them. Still Canada lead. And a beautiful change there by Canada. They got the push absolutely right. Gagnon of Canada being chased extremely hard. Both teams change here. It's lucky now for Canada. And 45, Lee, the bronze medalist, and the 1,000 metres behind him. Eight laps left. Inside world record pace. Still lucky Canada leading. Both teams change again. And a good one by Canada. But the Koreans responded very quickly. Number 14, the leader, Michelle Dania. Just behind him, 43, is Kim, the bronze man, the gold medalist in the 1,000 metres. Now number 11, Blackburn for Canada. And he's going away. The silver medalist in the 1,000 metres has stolen two metres. Right behind him, number 47, is Song of Korea. Both teams change again. A good change by both sides as they come round with four to go. Canada lead, Korea in second place. Japan third, New Zealand four, and they're down to a metre. Lucky again, and lucky being chased by Lee, the bronze medalist in the 1,000 metres. Both teams will change. Number 14 for Canada, Michel Daigneau, and he got a good one. Coming round with one lap to go. Canada lead, Korea in second place. A world record in sight. What a race this is. That's the gold medalist chasing him. Canada lead! And who got that? Korea, I think, by inches, stole it on the inside. What a tremendous race that was. The Koreans just pinched it with a new world record. That's where the medals went. Nothing for Britain once again. Well, we stay with the short track now because it's the women's final. This is for the individual medals. And once again, it's David Coleman. The first ever individual gold medal event for women in short track skating in the Olympic Games. The four finalists over 500 metres, Turner, United States, Lai of China, Huang, North Korea, Valsibor of Holland. 500 metres, four and a half laps of the track and straight away. It's the North Korean Huang who goes in front. Huang leads in second place, Kathy Turner, United States. In third place, Lai of China. And fourth, Belzebor of Holland. He's probably better over a longer distance. Still Huang. North Korea leading. Kathy Turner in second place. Third is Lai of China. And Belzebor not making any ground at all. And the North Korean has lost the lead with two to go. It's Kathy Turner leading United States. In second place, Lai of China. 
Third is the North Korean, and fourth is Baltimore. One lap to go. Turner, United States. A big notice in the arena says, Turner, the burner. And Turner leads. It's Turner, United States. And on the inside, Lai came through and may well have taken the gold medal. I think she did. 47-0 for the time. Outside the world record, Turner seemed to have it absolutely sewn up. A great notice appeared in the arena. Turner, the burner. Off the last bend, watch the Chinese girl on the inside. There's very little space. There's a barge, though. I wonder if that will mean the jury will have to sit on an appeal. Kathy Turner has been given the gold medal. And Turner, the burner. All the uh, banners stand up. Turner's been given the gold medal. Kathy Turner, only five feet two. National record holder in America, 500 and 1,000 meters. He's 29, takes the gold medal. And confirmation of the positions there. Now, coming up a little later, the story of the four-man bobsleigh. But first, the final alpine skiing event of the Games. The